Greetings, family, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we keep you updated on the appeal process of Robert Sylvester Kelly, and we are still awaiting sentencing verdict for the New York trial, acquittal, new trial, as well as the beginning of the Illinois trial, or hopefully get it thrown out. So we want to take our minds off of the legal areas of the case while his attorney, Jennifer Bonjean, does her thing for our king of R&B, Robert Sylvester Kelly. I want to talk to you today about something I'm doing for 2022 June. It's get in tune in June, emotional awareness segments. We're going to be doing that for the month of June because it's just time to bring some positivity to the weight. And we have gone through a whole lot of trauma listening to what is going on with Robert Sylvester Kelly. And we care so much about him until we want to hear everything that's going on. You know, we want to get that feel of this is going to happen or that's going to happen or, you know, whatever we're feeling. So let's talk a little bit about the topic of rejection and denial. And uh, when we look at inner reflection skills on how Robert Sylvester Kelly can really productively help himself heal and recover from the inside, what are some things we can suggest to him? If he were listening to this podcast right now, what would you say to him about his new way of living? Okay, this is surviving rejection and denial. So let's put some good positive words and comments in the live chat section of the comment box below. While I look up the terminology of rejection and denial. Denial is the action of declaring something to be untrue, a statement that something is not true, the refusal of something requested or desired. Rejection defined. Dismiss as inadequate, inappropriate, or not to one's taste. Refuse to agree to. Fail to show due affection or concern for someone. Consistent motivation builds a tolerance to success from rejection and denial. I learned that the hard way. As we embrace, nurture, and let go of experiences that create these feelings of rejection and denial over time, our emotions begin to change naturally. Robert recalls probably a million times that not the way he used his pinnacles or his finances in the past the right way. He probably has nightmares on how much he has done for others and given to others that he can probably visualize those who rejected and denied him when they could no longer reap the benefit of his worth as they celebrate it while he sits just contemplating over the season in his life right now. Um, Robert came into save so many people as the knight in shining armor of their lives. However, what if he had come in as knowing that he was working from true blood, sweat, and tears? What if he knew then what he knows now? What if he said no thank you to the kindness of the lifestyle and focused 
solely on himself. What celebration would be happening at this moment? Would it be his celebration? See, everyone played the fool in this situation. Let's create a sense of accountability here. Because what if everyone was responsible within the camp of his 30-year career? Would Robert be concerned about the four of pentacles in the zodiac? Or the king that sat on his riches not giving, but having it all so that he can say he was the king of it all, the R&B king? What if he realized beforehand that he was the knight bringing cups of happiness, money, and flowers to those who were going to turn those very gifts into a manifesto of dynamite? If we use the concept of recovery, we would begin at the first step. Do not use no matter what. Emotion makes us sad sometimes. Emotions make us laugh sometimes, but most of all, it'll make us fall in love. Emotions never tell us who to fall in love with or to make love for all the right reasons. Sometimes emotions after rejection and denial means we must feel the pain, go through the pain to come out of the pain. So there's going to be two factors. One primary, one secondary. The primary factors of emotion come in many forms. Reality is emotions are already active before even picking up a substance. It can be a woman, a man, anything that can attract an addiction. The secondary action comes next, creating the substance of a choice how one will use this addiction to comfort themselves is up to them. Will it be a full-fledged addiction or a use every now and then? Until the need of dependence emerges once again. This is secondary use. And we have been trained to think it comes from a drug or a chemically based physical effect. A human can be a drug. Get into a relationship that's toxic. You will very well quickly find that addiction comes in many forms. The primary form of the act is what makes addiction consistent. Some people can use love and anger as a means of primary factors, which opens addiction. This primary factor is the emotional gateway. Now we move to the secondary factor, and that's the numbing agent. Something to take away the pain. And I believe Robert Sylvester Kelly was under the influence of love. What are your thoughts? We all can create our own prison if we're not careful. Didn't he write the entire soundtrack to life? How did he get that opportunity so long ago? Was it, say, 1999, somewhere around there? Could someone manifest the situation at the time for the future king of R&B? Or was he subliminally speaking into existence to this, his audience? One's physical or mental incarceration experience teaches them how to bring chaos to a comfortable situation at first especially when we're in our primary factor. Like we are prone to toxicity. It secondly teaches one how to openly acknowledge one's weakness. How to bring to surface traditions they already know about. Because they always use them. You know, that's how character is built. Once we find ourselves finally, once we find ourselves finally, we must make a vow to become aware of our weaknesses, face our demons, bring forth positivity from the time spent in that incarcerated mind state, 
Some of us go through an entire lifetime in that incarcerated mind state. We will eventually pause and take a sabbatical from the world and find recovery and healing from inside. Alternatively, Alternative recovery solutions is what I call my time away from the world. Here, one pause is long enough to find solutions to every growing problem they never had the time to learn to control. Creating a better life for themselves and the world. Not everyone will experience incarceration within the walls of an institutional system. Please know this. Thank God for that. The overall purpose is to find one's self. Some of us are so institutionalized, we can be incarcerated in our day-to-day -day existence outside of a cell, in our own private world. Some are not trying to see the big picture that will help with the change. My purpose came when I found myself in my incarcerated state, was to help myself find meaning and purpose and to record it psychologically, to also be an example to others who wish to pursue their own life purpose. We don't have to wait until the mistake has been committed. Educate oneself is the first way to find purpose. Educating oneself is the first way to find purpose. Becoming fully aware of knowing oneself is the second way to find purpose. And the third way, build a strong team of people that will have your back. If Robert had done that, we wouldn't be going through this right now. Things would be so very, very different for him and for us as his supporters, fans, and acknowledgers. But will one decide to take this long, lonely journey with a few friends that we can count on one hand and have a few fingers left? Many people are afraid, not strong enough, and they turn back to the broad path. You know, that path with all the followers, but we dare you to be the leader within your own life and be your own best friend for one 30 day period. See how fulfilling it is. And then we will check in on your progress. I want to leave you with three questions for consideration. You can feel free to leave it in the chat or just create a notebook for your own personal note taking. I will be doing these in tune in the month of June segments while we await Robert's situation. Number one, how does being rejected and denied make one feel, especially in the case of Robert Sylvester Kelly. How do you think he's feeling? Number two, what tools do you use to effectively support positive change within your own life? And number three, what are a few basic rules you use to deal with personal rejection? I'm going to leave the live chat open for about 10 minutes for you all to write your thoughts if you choose to do so. And again, the questions are, number one, how does being rejected and denied make one feel, especially in the case of Robert Sylvester Kelly? You can title this answer number one. How does being rejected and denied make one feel, especially in the case of Robert Sylvester Kelly? You can actually pause this premiere right into the live chat, unpause it, and you'll be right back in the same place you're at now. Number two, what tools do you use to effectively support positive changes within your own life?
Again, number two, what tools do you use to effectively support positive change within your own life? Number three, what are a few basic rules you use to deal with personal rejection? Like, do you ignore it? Do you, what are some of the rules that you use when you deal with personal rejection? I thank you so much for liking and sharing this podcast. Please share this with someone who can benefit from the content regarding emotion. And I'm going to leave the chat open. As always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.